now. There we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Facebook is live now. This call is being recorded. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before, and I believe as always, this is a day to praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for fixing the technology this morning. It was a little shaky at the beginning. So, but Lord, we just thank you right now. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. The Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. You've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We thank you for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right minds, and giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We just praise you, God, for breathing the breath of life into us one more time. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you're doing, and thank you, Lord, for all that you're about to do. And, Lord, we just praise you because of who you are. You're an awesome God, a marvelous God, a magnificent God, a glorious God, a holy God, a righteous God. Lord, we could just keep going on and on just saying how wonderful you are. You are just so wonderful, God, and I thank you for being such a wonderful, awesome and glorious God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, as we get ready to study your word to this morning, dear Lord, in Sunday school, open up our ears that we might hear what you would have us to hear. Open up my mouth that I might speak what you would have me to speak. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And then, Lord, let our listeners, let those that are listening to this now and listen to this recording later, not only be hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. And that not only for them, Lord, but for myself also. We thank you and we praise you. We plead the blood of Jesus over this technology. We plead the blood of Jesus over every household. We plead the blood of Jesus over every community. We plead the blood of Jesus over this world because there's power in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, by the power of his Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning again, everyone. This is... Uh, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Um, this is the Guiding Light Ministry International Conference called Sunday School Lesson. And we are getting ready to roll into this lesson this morning. Our lesson this morning comes from Psalms. Psalms, so turn your Bible to the Psalms. Psalms 104. Psalms 104. And this psalm is, is a psalm of 35 uh, uh, verses, but we're just going to do a select few. As you first open up this psalm in your Bible or on your, your uh, um, internet connection or your electronic Bible, either one, this psalm starts off with these words, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And then if you go all the way down to the bottom of this text, it ends at verse 35. The last words of verse 35 is, bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. And that's what this psalm is all about. This psalm is about praising God, blessing the Lord, O my soul, and praising his holy name. That's that's what this psalm is all about. And this psalm is, is based on the fact that, 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 that we ought to praise our wise creator. We ought to praise our wise creator. So let me set up some things first. Uh, uh, um, our key verse, our key verse is verse 24. So turn down, look down at verse 24. Verse 24 says this, O Lord. And out of the out of the King James Version, New King James, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works 
in wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. That's that's how the that's how the uh, New King James reads. The, the the Message Bible says it this way: What a wildly and wonderful world, God! You made it all with wisdom at your side. May earth overflow with your wonderful creations. What a wildly wonderful world, God. You made it uh, with wisdom at your side. Oh, the earth is overflowing with your wonderful creation. The New Living Translation says this about the verse. It says, oh, Lord, what a variety of things you have made in wisdom you have made them all the earth is full of your creation oh hallelujah so this psalm is is centered on the fact that we are to praise our wise creator we are to praise our wise creator this 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 psalmist this psalmist he wants us to praise god for his manifold Wonderful works. What is manifold? Manifold means his many, his various, his, uh, all kinds of, of wonderful works. And we should also praise God for being so wise and making things beautiful. Making all the things beautiful that we could even see. And so as I'm sitting here on my back porch, you, you see my brick wall, but I'm looking out the window and I see the marvelous trees. I see the sun up in the sky, even though it's behind some dark clouds, but I see some light clouds. I see the trees and the birds and, and, and I see the grass growing and I even see the weeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of those things are things that God has beautifully made. Matter of fact, this morning, it's so warm here in Alabama I got mushrooms that came up in my yard overnight. Oh, God, he does some awesome things. Hallelujah. And so as we look at this lesson, the key that we want to grab from this lesson, the key concept is God's works show his power and wisdom. I'm going to say that again. God's works show his power and his wisdom. That, that, that's it. When, when you see what God has done, when you notice what God is doing, what you notice, all that you already see, you have to understand he, he done it with power and wisdom. Now, here's my keys for kids. I like to give keys for kids uh, on, on, on these lessons because sometimes you just have to break it down to that level so that the kids can understand it. Listen to this. The Lord God, number one, is the awesome creator of all things. If you can grab a hold of that concept in your head, that, that, that the Lord God is the awesome creator of all things, that takes you all the way back to Genesis. Then, then you look at creation depends on God for everything. Now, creation may not know that they depend on God for everything, but creation does depend on God for everything. Because if God got lazy, if God came off of his job, if God went to sleep, the, the earth would fall apart. But thanks be to God, we got a faithful God. And number three, number three, our wise God provides all that we need uh, to survive. Now, that, that's how the commentary put They got to survive. But I'm like this. Our God supplies everything we need, provides all that we need that we may thrive. Not just survive, but that we may thrive. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody should say amen because you need to understand, he don't just give us enough to, to survive but, uh, or to strive, but he gives us more than enough that we might thrive in him. Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> hey, oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. That's the keys for kids. Now, to get down into the depths of this, for all you deep scholars, today's lesson's aim 
is to list some diverse elements of God's creation. And we're going to look at all of these different elements of God's creation. The biblical principle that we want to grab from this lesson is to recognize God and his mighty power to create and carry us. And then what we want to take away from this lesson is to respect and to commit care for God's creation. Now, I don't know about y'all, but down here in Alabama, um, we have what we call a recycle bin. And, and many people, you know, you didn't heard them ask that question. Uh, uh, do you recycle when they come to your house? And, and they're asking that question because when they come to your house, they, they want to know where your recycle bin is so they can put their plastic bottles and, and their cans and all of those kind of things. But now think about this. 40 years ago, you never, and some of those of us who live that long, you never heard somebody talking about, uh, do you what do you recycle? And I and I looked in the Bible. I did a search for for the word recycle, and nowhere in the Bible do you see the word recycle. But there is a word that is similar to recycle. It's called renewed, uh, and another one is called restore. So so God don't just recycle. God renews and He restores and. And when we start looking at this psalm this morning, I want somebody to reach beyond themselves and let God restore them and let God renew them. Yeah, yeah, I just snuck in a title of this lesson. Uh, it, 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 it's about reaching uh, beyond ourselves. I mean, reaching way beyond who we are, and look at what God is doing, and look at what God has done, that, that, that we might be renewed and restored. There's a story of this, this uh, young lady uh, who was at the hospital, and, 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 and her, 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 her father was sick, and and on and the doctors had only given her uh given her her, her father uh, a matter of hours to live and she's sitting at her father's bedside and her pastor was there with her at that given time when the nurse came in and gave that bad news. And, and the pastor, he just sat there and prayed silently as, as all of this was going on. And, and then after, after the silence broke in the room, the young lady cried out, said, why, why, why is this happening to my daddy? Why is this happening? I don't know if I, if I believe in God anymore. And, and the minister knew from past experience that this young lady was, 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 was one of those people who understood things from a very deep scientific level. She, she understood molecules and atoms, and, and she understood how the earth uh, 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 goes around the sun and, and all that. She understood the universe. And the man, the pastor, he says, if, if we could only imagine before all of these things, all of these many things that are there in the world, or here in this world, existed, we would realize that before everything existed, there was one who existed. And that one is God. He existed before all of this stuff. And he talked to the lady, the young lady, about this and said, maybe, just maybe, you got to reach beyond yourself and see the creator. And so that's, that's what we're going to look at when we look at this text. When we start seeing how awesome the creator is. We live in a time where, where we, we praise man for their technology. I'm one of those people in the technology ram. I mean, got stuff in space, got stuff even probably in your hand right now that I have tested over the years, telephone stuff, your car stuff, 
stuff in space, robots. I, I'm a technological person, but 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 that's what man created. I, but when I look at a rose and how a rose is constructed, I say there must be a God. Because man could have never came up with something as beautiful as a rose. And if you ever looked in a microscope and you see a cell of anything and how awesome and beautiful it is, you say, you must say, there must be a God. If you ever looked up to a telescope and see the universe, the stars, the sun, the moon, there, there must be a God who created all of this. And I even can talk like Saul, uh, Saul said, if you ever think that was not Saul, but Solomon said, if you ever looked at the beauty of a woman. Mm, mm, mm. Every time I look at my wife, I say, there must, there must, there must be a God. Because only God could put such beauty together like this. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let's look at this text. And I'm I'm going I'm going to approach it backwards. I'm not I'm not going to deal with uh the first verses first. I'm going to deal with the first verses last. I want to go down to the last verses first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause see, I'm I'm gonna build up to the first part. So so let's go to the bottom first. And when you look at when you look at this text, uh, uh, verses twenty nine and thirty, let's go to twenty nine and thirty of Psalms one o one o four, verses twenty nine and thirty. Listen to the text. But if you turn away from them, they oh that, that's that's my let me let me go my King James. I'm sorry, King James says. You hid your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, and they die and return to dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. We have to reach beyond yourself. It's personal now. If we, if God was to hide his face from us, we would be in trouble. If he was to take away his breath that he gives us, then we would die and return to the dust. You remember back in Genesis when, when, he, when he took dirt and, 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 and he formed man from the dust of the ground and and then he breathed his ruah in him. He breathed his breath into him. That breath made man a living creature. And we need to understand that, that the God we serve is the very air that we breathe. He, 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 he is the one that, that, that provides the air. He is the creator of the air. Oh, yes, it's his creation. Air is his creation. But that air that we breathe breathes physical life into us. But not only does it breathe physical life. If you look at that word back in Genesis when he says, I breathe my ruach into man. He's saying, I breathe my very spirit into man. And, and, and then when you look over in, in, the, in, in uh, uh, John chapter 3, when Jesus is having this dialogue with Nicodemus, and, 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 and Nicodemus said, how can this be? And, and, and Jesus said, and when Jesus told him, you must be born again. And how, how can he be? And, he, and how does this happen? He says, well, with the spirit. It's like the wind. It, it goes where it wants to and you don't know where it came from and you don't know where it's going. That's how God's spirit is. So, we got to reach beyond ourselves and see that God is everywhere. 
all the time. His marvelous and magnificent goodness, the goodness of God's works is going on around us all the time. Everywhere we turn, his goodness, his marvelous working power is everywhere. And that takes me to my next point. We got we to gotta reach to the source. After you reach beyond yourself, you got to reach for the source. Listen, listen to verses 24 through, 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 20 to through 28. Listen to them. Oh, Lord, you're magnified. How magnified are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. This great and wide sea in which are innumerable teeming things living through both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan which you have made to play. They all wait for you that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open their hands and they are filled with good. And then verse 29 says again, you hide your face, they are troubled. God is our source of life. You, 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 after you reach beyond yourself, your own resources, then you reach towards God and, and you find that he's the very source of life. He's done so many great things, his work, and he does it with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He's the very source of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. They tell this joke that uh, great engineers made the Titanic and it sunk. One man and his children made Noah's Ark by the instructions and wisdom of God. And it survived the flood. God, when he gives us wisdom and knowledge and understanding, when he tells us how to do a thing, we should recognize him. And God is our source of life. He's a sovereign God. So we ought to praise him and reach beyond ourselves. Reach beyond and reach for our source of life. And understand that we ought to give him praise, honor, and glory. Now you understand why I wanted to wait till the end to come to the front of this scripture. Oh, he said one more thing when he talked about the how God sees. He said, don't pass up them seas and how the boats can sail on them seas. And, and God made the, both the living things, both the big and the small. And he talked about this Leviathan. That's some, some great large animal creation that's in the water. And when you look in the sea, there's so vast amount of animals or fish or whatever you want to call them that you can't even name. Oh, I thank the Lord. I praise the Lord when I see a jellyfish. I praise the Lord when I see a starfish. And then I'm like my mama. I, I praise the Lord when I see some buffalo fish. Because <laughs> God created that buffalo fish, he created that cat 
this. He created that salmon that we love to eat. He even created the sardines, the little ones, and the mackerels that we enjoy eating. And then the bass where the men go out and fish and they enjoy the fishing. God created all of this. And yet, man can sail on that same sea. Yes, man can sail on that same sea. Oh, Lord, you're an awesome God. For all your wonderful, manifold creation that you put together with wisdom and knowledge. Oh, so now, now, after we've reached beyond yourself, after you've reached beyond yourself and you reach to the to the source of life, it's now time to reach. You gotta reach to praise him. You gotta reach a level of praise. As I told you, many of us we get caught up in our technology. Sometimes you just have to turn technology off. No telephone, no television, no, no music. And just sit in the presence of God. And, and just absorb all the beautiful things that he has created that man had nothing to do with. Man did not create the sky. Man did not create the sun. Man did not create the clouds that God walks on. Man did not create the moon that causes the tide to come in and the tide to go out. Man did not create any of this. This is God's creation. Listen, listen now to Psalms 104. Starting at verse 1 all the way down to verse 4. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God. You are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Who covered yourself with light as with a garment. Who stretched out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of the upper chambers in the waters. Who makes the clouds his chariots. Who walks on the wings of the wind. Who makes his angel spirit. His ministers a flame of fire. The message Bible says, oh, my soul, bless God. God, my God, how great you are, beautiful and gloriously robed, dressed up in sunshine and, and all heaven stretch out for your tent. You built your palace on the ocean's deep, made a chariot out of the clouds, and took off on wind wings. You commandeered winds as messengers and appointed fire and flame as ambassadors. The New Living Translation says, let all that I am everything I am, Lord. Oh, my soul, my entirety, Lord. Let everything I am praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, how great you are. You are robed with honor and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtains of the heavens, you lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make the clouds your chariots. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The winds are your messenger. Flames of fire 
are your servants. Oh, hallelujah. Our God, our wonderful God, we, when we reach beyond ourselves, when we reach to the source of our lives and, 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 and almost natural result ensures that comes into play, that is, we praise. We can't help but say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we reach beyond ourselves, when we reach for the source of our lives, we just have to go hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. When we understand that from the very beginning of our lives, we are gifts from God. He gifted us with life. He gifted us with talent. He gifted us with treasures. He's gifted us from the very beginning of our lives. And we must give him praise. When we understand that, that God provides everything we need to live, to move, and have our being. He doesn't just want us to survive this world. He don't just want us to strive in this world. But he, he wants us to, to, be, to, be, to the survive in this world and, and to just strive in this world. But he wants us to thrive. Be all that we can be. There is a response that is needed on our part. We must take that pastor of praise and declare like this psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Meaning all that is in me, my entirety, we must get our hands up and say, Praise the Lord, oh my soul. This, this psalmist wants us to learn how to just praise God, the creator, the wise one. And yes, we have to reach beyond ourselves. We have to reach to our source. And when we start reaching for our source, we're going to naturally reach for praise. So next time that you're feeling down and out under the dumps, something going on, you done lost your focus, you done lost your praise, you done lost your joy. Just look up and see what the Lord is doing. Oh, yes. Trouble going to come. Trouble always do come. But there's a God that's always in control. No matter what trouble brings, God has a solution. I don't know about you, but I didn't been through some tests. And I failed my test. But there are a few that I have passed. Some, not that many. And I got a testimony that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think. Yes, I've been in some mess. But he still has turned it around and gave me a message. Yes, yes, I got to praise him. I got to praise him. Because when I look at the marvelous and wonderful things he has done, 70 degrees in Alabama, 70 degrees in St. Louis, 70 is probably about 65 in Chicago. This is the middle of winter. What's going on? Where everybody say, oh, it's climate change and all that. I ain't arguing about all that. That ain't what I'm saying. God has a way of doing things that's beyond us. 
We have doves, turtle doves, if you will, not pigeons, but doves that come and, and, and rest over our house. And the doves that rest over our house, they come together and they build nests. And right now, in the middle of January, this usually doesn't happen until March or April, we have three sets of doves with, with nests at our house. My wife is just awed and amazed about it. And I said, baby, that's the Lord's work. Leave them doves alone. Oh, they're just making a mess. Leave them doves alone. <laughs> God sends them here every season. So what am I saying to you? There are seasons in our lives where we go through some trials, tribulations, and troubles. But instead of looking at that dark cloud, look for the silver lining. Hallelujah. Reach beyond yourself and give God some praise. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for being the creator of all things. We don't always understand how you do things, God. But we understand you're still God and you're God all by yourself. You're sovereign. So, Lord, when we can't understand your plan, still help us reach up to grab your hand. Help us to reach beyond ourselves. Help us to reach to you as our source. Help us to reach to you in praise. Thank you, God. And we praise you this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Remember, before God was our redeemer, he was our creator. Before I close out any message on Facebook and on the recording of conference call, I always like to do the prayer of salvation. Please pray this prayer with me. God won't recycle you, but he will renew you and restore you. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule in the reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Shout out to everybody on Facebook. Thank you. Uh, for being with us this morning. Come back again. And as always, we say to those on these recordings, uh, be a blessing. Be blessed. And as always, be a blessing. Let's talk to you later, Facebook. If you want to join us on the conference call, you're more than welcome. We're going to go into overtime where we pray for one another. Um, the telephone number is 910 218 Zero five three one again nine one zero two one eight zero five three one. If you have a burning question or you just want to have a comment, this is where we do it on the conference call. And you won't interrupt us coming on, we won't be on long. Just come on over and we can have a little conversation for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Love you, be blessed.